Gerald and Pamela, two high school students who disappeared in 1971, rocked the small town of Elmwood. Their inseparable bond and bright spirits have distinguished them since childhood. It left the community in a state of disbelief and despair when they suddenly disappeared. Numerous theories and rumors have been circulated about their disappearance. Despite exhaustive searches and investigations, a lingering shadow hung over Elmwood. It has been decades since Cheryl and Pamela went missing, and the mystery has become part of a local legend. A tragic tale told and retold without any hope of resolution. An old car enthusiast and retired mechanic, Harry received a phone call that changed everything on a warm summer day in 2011. Using a breadcrumb trail, he discovered an abandoned vehicle miles away from Elmwood. As Harry watched as Harry walked down the street, his eyes scanned the surroundings for anything that might catch his attention. In the next moment, he spotted the car of vintage 1969 Chevrolet Impala. His first move was to approach the owner of the car and ask about it. It was finally sold for an outrageous price by the owner. Apparently, his father had owned it and had never run it. Upon returning to his workshop, Harry eagerly awaited the chance to breathe a new life into the car. When Harry began restoring the car, he couldn't help but admire its beauty and vintage design. Right. However, it held a secret that was long forgotten. A truly remarkable discovery only came to his attention as he cleaned out the trunk. This revived a cold case that had been dormant for years. While Harry was digging through the trunk of his car, he brushed past a small locked box that seemed out of place. As he carefully retrieved the box and examined it closely, he felt a mixture of curiosity and apprehension. What? In anticipation, Harry slowly pried open the box's lid, not knowing what he would find inside. The cursed vehicle would make him regret ever purchasing it. When Harry remembered where he recognized the car, his heart beat rapidly. In an article from 1971 reported the disappearance of two girls. Despite the box's creaking and rust-covered hinges, it resisted being opened. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and it hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. It kid was a moment of surprise and shock that widened his eyes. In the small town of Elmwood, nestled in the heart of Colorado, Harry Lake had lived his entire life. Despite its idyllic location, it was mostly known as a pit stop for travelers en route to Denver. Therefore, there were more motels and gas stations in the area than any other business. In spite of this, Harry noticed that the market had a noticeable gap as he grew up. In order to meet the demand for something that had not yet been offered, he was determined to provide it. In his flying, his father instilled in him the importance of being handy at a young age. Among the tasks they tackled together were repairing leaky pipes and installing shelves. For Harry, however, one particular lesson ignited a passion that he would carry with him throughout his life. Harry's Harry's father taught him everything he could about his beloved Ford Capri, and this knowledge became an integral part of his life. As a child, Harry watched in awe as his dad skillfully disassembled the engine of their old car and then meticulously rebuilt it. At his father's precision work, the roar of the engine and the intricate mechanical movements left an indelible impression on Harry. That moment cemented his desire to become a master mechanic when he grew up. After graduating from high school, Harry wasted no time before jumping into business with his dad's assistance. Harry's automotive repair looked very promising, and he even managed to win the favor of a local automotive sports team. The culture of cars was deeply ingrained in Elmwood's history, and Harry felt like he was part of that legate. However, there were other legends, darker ones that Harry had long forgotten. Until one day, something was presented to him that he couldn't refuse. Thirty years had passed since Harry established his own business as a head mechanic. After all those years of hard work and dedication, he realized it was time to pass on the torch and retire. His only son, Adam, was the most suitable candidate to take over the family business, so Harry handed over the reins to him. He still came by the shop every day, but Adam handled the clients. Despite feeling relieved, Harry couldn't help but wonder what life would be like without the hustle and bustle of running a successful auto repair shop. One day, out of the blue, Harry received a call that would change his life forever. He had earned a reputation in the town for being the go-to person when something interesting showed up. As the evening was drawing to a close, Harry was in the process of closing up his shop. He turned off all the lights and locked the front door. Just as he was about to leave, he heard the phone ringing. Initially, he thought about ignoring it since the store was officially closed, but his curiosity got the better of him. With a sense of anticipation, he quickly unlocked the door and rushed back inside to answer the phone. He had a gut feeling about the phone call. On the other end of the line was a man who was about to inform him about something quite interesting. It would be something that he couldn't refuse. Apparently, a Chevrolet Impala had been spotted in another town nearby. Harry's heart skipped a beat as he realized that he was on the verge of an exciting discovery. The only hang-up was that the town was even smaller than Elmwood, but the opportunity that lay ahead was too good to pass up. He knew how he had to investigate it further. 
The following morning, he informed Adam that he needed to run an important errand and left him in charge of the shop. Harry hitched a trailer to his truck and set out for the next town over, which was a good two-hour drive away. Finally, he arrived at the town and carefully parked his truck. He surveyed his surroundings, taking in the quaint charm and character of the place. It, he asked a local about the vehicle and they pointed him toward the old farm at the top of the hill. After a while, after a while his gaze fell on a beautiful vintage 1969 Chevrolet Impala, partially concealed by ivy and parked next to a run-down barn. He approached the old farmhouse with a sense of anticipation, wondering if anyone still lived there. He knocked on the screen door and after a few minutes of waiting, an elderly man appeared. Harry inquired about the car, and the old man's demeanor turned hesitant, almost fearful. It was my father's. It never worked, but he would never get rid of it, the man said. Hesitation in his voice. Harry should have noted the owner's unease, but his obsession with the car was too strong. He would pay anything for such a beautiful piece of history. After some haggling, the old man finally agreed to sell the car, but something about the transaction left Harry feeling uneasy. He had no idea that it was a part of history that should have been left alone. As Harry towed the vintage car back to his workshop, he felt an overwhelming sense of excitement. He couldn't wait to see it restored to its former glory. He couldn't wait to get started on rebuilding the engine, fixing the interior, and painting the car. As he examined the car's exterior, he marveled at its elegant design and timeless beauty. However, as he looked closer, he noticed something eerie about it. The car had been hidden under a thick layer of ivy, gaze, and now it was out in the open where he could see it better. Harry couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Harry had been blinded when purchasing the vehicle. He'd always had a soft spot for vintage cars, especially Chevy's. It would be a bonding experience like no other. Harry and Adam worked diligently, cleaning every nook and cranny. As they progressed, the car began to reveal its former glory, and Harry felt a sense of satisfaction and anticipation. Suddenly, a memory resurrecering surfaced, casting a shadow over Harry's excitement. He remembered the early 70s, rife with the series of unsettling cases that had plagued the state. The young girls that had gone missing surfaced in his mind. Each case Hayes had one chilling similarity of vintage Chevy matching the one Harry and Adam were working on. Indeed, the details of the gruesome stories surrounding the girls' disappearances played on a loop in Harry's mind. He began to question the wisdom of his purchase. He wondered if, by cleaning the car, he and Adam were tampering with potential police evidence. The odd circumstances of the sale, coupled with the car's deteriorated state, fueled his growing apprehension. That night, Harry sat at his computer, delving into the archives of local newspapers and police reports. His heart pounded as he found articles detailing the disappearances and the suspected involvement of a Chevy similar to his. The car's color matched, the model matched is the model matched, and the chilling similarities sent shivers down Harry's spine. He continued reading, and each piece of information he uncovered made his stomach churn. The next morning, Harry couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had settled over him. Inch Adam, sensing his father's unease, offered to take over the restoration, but Harry hesitated. The car's presence loomed large, casting a pall over their shared enthusiasm for the project. As they continued to work on the car, Harry made an unsettling discovery. Hidden beneath layers of grime and decay, he found a compartment in the trunk that seemed out of place. Inside, he discovered a small box containing personal items, a necklace, and a bracelet, and a corroded piece of plastic that resembled a driver's license. Harry froze, terror blasting through his veins. His son came to see what he was holding. Are you okay? Dad Adam asked. I am Harry answered, but his voice was shaking. He stepped away from the car, walking to a seat next to the garage's door. He could see that his son had no idea what was going on. He needed to tell him what was happening. Hugh Harry decided to share his findings with Adam, hoping his son could offer some clarity or reassurance. As they poured over the information together, Adam, too, began to share his father's concerns. The evidence was circumstantial, but the similarities were too striking to ignore. So Harry and Harry and Adam decided to check the car, needing to know if what they had in their hand was the infamous Chevrolet. Harry and Adam got to work. Let's say last time Harry had heard about the infamous Chevy was almost 50 years ago, in 1971. The car had been linked to the disappearance of several girls and the story had haunted him ever since. Harry couldn't help but wonder could this be the same car. Harry knew that he had to look closer at the car before doing anything else. He unlocked the trunk, wondering what could be hidden inside. What did he find? Inside, among the spare tire and scattered debris, he noticed something unusual several items of clothing. It's in just any clothing, women's clothing. It was withered, and some were ripped, his heart pounding in his chest. What had he just stumbled upon? Harry's hand shook as he picked up each piece of clothing, his mind racing with the possibilities of what he might uncover. Among the items were a faded scarf, a pair of torn gloves, and a small locket. The locket caught his attention the most. It was delicate, with intricate engravings on the surface. His breath caught in his throat as he recognized the faces from the news clippings he had seen decades ago Cheryl and Pamela. 
the girls who had disappeared without a trace. A chill ran down Harry's spine as he realized the significance of his discovery. And as the car he had bought on a whim was not just any vintage vehicle, it was a key piece of evidence and evidence in a decades-old cold case. Harry's hands trembled as he carefully placed the items back in the trunk, his thoughts consumed by the weight of what he had uncovered. And he knew he had to act quickly, but he also knew that he couldn't do it alone. If this was what he thought it was, he needed to involve the authorities. But what if they thought he was a suspect in the case? It's what if they arrested him and put him in jail for the disappearance of those girls? With a sense of urgency, Harry closed the trunk and asked Adam to close the workshop for the day. Arriving at his house, Harry wasted no time. So he began searching through the internet again, looking for more confirmation that what he had was the actual car that had caused so many people a lot of pain. Harry's research did nothing more than convince him that he bought a car that had been, had been involved in so many atrocities. Immediately, he returned to the garage and started searching around the vehicle again. To his amazement, he found something that surpassed his wildest imagination, leaving him absolutely astounded. At first, nothing seemed, seemed out of the ordinary. That was until he noticed something hidden underneath the spare tire. He lifted it up and saw a small box. He pried it out of the trunk and stared at it. It was a black metal tin that looked preserved despite the worn look of the car. He felt a shiver go down his spine as read the engraved words on the box property of Cheryl Anderson. Please return if found. Before touching anything else, Harry sprinted inside. He went straight to his computer in his car to start up a search engine and confirm his suspicions. But he only hung his head in heartbreak as he found the old article about Cheryl Anderson, the girl who went missing with her friend in 1971. Things seemed to fit together all too well. With trembling hands, he carefully opened the tin box, unsure of what he might find inside. As the lid creaked open, he was met with a collection of old photographs, newspaper clippings, and handwritten letters. Each item told a story of a life interrupted, of dreams shattered, and of two young girls lost to the passage of time. With a heavy heart, he made a decision. He would go to the authorities and share his findings, no matter the consequences. Gerald and Pamela deserved justice, and he would stop at nothing to ensure that their voices were heard. Jake and Harry contacted the local authorities. They almost didn't believe him when they arrived, and he told them what he had found. The police swiftly reopened the case. The car, it turned out, belonged to a now-deceased local man who had been a suspect early in the investigation, and he had an alibi that seemed to clear him. Further examination of the vehicle and then the newfound evidence led investigators to reevaluate the man's alibi and connections to the girls. Even more surprisingly, the man who had sold Harry the car was the suspect's son, unaware of what his father had done. The police cleared him of any connection, but that didn't mean his now-deceased father got the same treatment. Forensic advancements allowed detectives to uncover traces of DNA in the car that matched Cheryl and Pamela, providing the missing link that eluded the authorities for so long. The police, now armed with more information than they ever had before, decided to check the barn on the man's property, but they had no idea what they'd find. The police got a warrant and stormed the property, checking every nook and cranny. There, they found evidence that the girls had been there. After a thorough search, the police found something that they couldn't believe. There was a disturbance in the soil behind the barn, Someone had buried something there. Yet after days of digging behind the barn, the police finally found the last piece of evidence they needed for the case. It was something no one expected to find. Horror crept over their faces as they unearthed a box. And they carried it out and opened it. There was an old journal that belonged to the perpetrator of the crime. The detectives read through the letter until the end, but they couldn't believe what the last entry detailed. Many of the girls escaped in the middle of the night. I'm burying the evidence and hiding what I can inside the car the police scratched their heads. If the girls escaped, then why hadn't they returned to their families? No report of the kidnapping was ever made either. At least they knew the girls' lives hadn't ended at the hands of the man. The discovery of the journal only added more layers to the mystery surrounding Cheryl and Pamela's disappearance. It seemed that the girls had managed to escape their captor, but what had happened to them afterward? The police launched a thorough investigation into the whereabouts of Cheryl and Pamela, hoping to finally uncover the truth of their fate. But as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, their efforts yielded no new leads. The case once again grew cold, leaving the town of Elmwood grappling with unanswered questions and lingering during doubts. Like for the families of Cheryl and Pamela, the newfound evidence provided a bittersweet sense of closure. While they may never know the full extent of what happened to their loved ones, knowing that they had not been forgotten brought a small, a small measure of solace. The town of Elmwood, too, found some semblance of peace in the resolution of the decades-old mystery. As for Harry, his role in unraveling the mystery of Cheryl and Pamela's disappearance earned him a place of honor in the annals of Elmwood's history. His determination and perseverance had brought closure to a grieving community and justice to two lost souls. Though he had stumbled upon the truth by chance, Harry's unwavering commitment to seeking justice had made all the difference. 
Harry hoped that the girls were safe wherever they had escaped to and that they would one day return to their families in Elmwood. He couldn't begin to imagine what they had endured at the hands of that man, and he was so relieved that they were able to get away. The only relief was that the man was now does now deceased, and he couldn't hurt anyone else. But Harry knew that he wasn't the only one out there. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of terrible men who made it their mission to hurt people. And Harry wished that he could, he could put a stop to them all. His only wish was that his town of Elmwood would, would one day receive the closure it so desperately wanted and needed. Harry, who had innocently sought to restore a piece of automotive history, had inadvertently helped bring light to one of the town's most enduring mysteries. A the discovery in the trunk of the old Chevrolet brought long overdue answers and a measure of peace to a community that had been haunted by the tragedy for decades. The police had a greater undertaking now, looking for the girls after they had escaped. While the truth behind Cheryl and Pamela's fate was more harrowing than anyone had imagined, the resolution of their case served as a reminder of the unexpected ways in which secrets come to light and how. Sometimes, justice finds a way to prevail, even after many years have passed.